Yes, we're going to talk about the Svarta Pete phenomenon. Um, let's uh, move on here. This is the, uh, yeah, Franz Timmermans right now, the second in command in Europe, who was as the uh, foreign minister of the Netherlands posing with a, well, one white guy and a bunch of black people doing all the work. To me, that is only one definition, Django chained. Uh, black, exactly. Oh, and, and as uh, Dutch people will explain, it's not black. That's just white people in blackface. And then as an American, I'm like, that's worse. Uh, and it's not just the uh, foreign minister. It was indeed the prime minister. Here's what Mark Rutte had to say at this year's nuclear security summit with Obama in The Hague. And it is not green peat or brown peat, it is black peat. So I cannot change that. <laughs> this is a old tradition. And uh, I can only say that my friends in uh, the Dutch Antilles uh, they are very happy when they have Sinterklaas because they don't have to paint their faces. And when I'm playing for Black, Black Pete, I'm for days trying to get off uh, yes. uh, the stuff on my face. Mark Rutte, that clears things up. Oh. Of course, it might be easier for the Dutch Prime Minister to realize the history of slavery, but, oh, it turns out he cut uh, the entire funding for the Dutch Slavery Institute, Ninse, recently. Uh, but let's try to get as much history as we can in just a couple minutes. Let's start with prehistory. I mean, this whole Svartopi tradition goes back to the pagan gods, Vodan, uh, or Odin, and the chimney boy, uh, his son, to check the burnt offering uh, for the winter solstice. It's pagan. It's all about dark and light. Uh, Saint Nicholas, of course, was the bishop who rescued kids, and he had a volunteer who, for a long time, was still, uh, this is more Germanic, you know, uh, not the most pure, in fact, dark and light. Uh, but hey, uh, Dutch people with Svarte Piet, at least it's not as messed up as Krampus in Germany. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could be worse. Um, flash forward to 1850, where Sinterklaas and Sein Knecht uh, from uh, Jan Schenkman. This is the classic image uh, in introducing, yes, uh, just the one Svarte Piet. But then in 1935, um, there was uh, Witte Piet. Uh, this is the Intocht, or the big uh, um, parade. And uh, still, a lot of these guys in the recognizable outfits, but not a lot of blackface. So if people want to talk about, oh, let's go back to the way it was done in history, this is what we're talking about. Still just one Knecht or person in blackface. Flash forward to 1945, when apparently the Canadian troops who were stationed in Amsterdam and the Netherlands said, oh, this is a great tradition. We'd like to join in helping give presents. And blackface, not a problem. They started blacking up and hey, hence we are back to Django Chained. Um, Flash forward to present day, uh, Svart to Pete. This is what I came to the Netherlands and found. Uh, it reminds me of that movie, science fiction movie, where the aliens emit some substance that humans breathe in so that we don't realize they're actually hideous and aliens. It seems like that's the effect that Svart to Pete has on most Dutch people that I have talked to. Um, it, th this is like blackface, right? No, no, they insist. It's from the chimney. Yes, the magical Dutch chimney that gets black all over the face and none on their clothes at all. And the huge afro, of and course. The lips, of course the red lips. And the red lips, exactly. And 1965, <laughs> the tradition quietly continues. Uh, Svarte Piet is no longer allowed to have the rue or the stick for beating the kids, no longer putting them in the sack and taking them away to Spain. This was on the big TV show, Sinterklaas Journal. Sinterklaas says, we're not going to beat the kids anymore. And from now on, Svarte Piet is just a happy, beloved character that gives the kids the toys. Flash forward to 1995, when they even tried some something totally politically correct, no more black Pete will do rainbow Pete or clearin Pete. That re resulted in death threats for the TV producers who put on this guy and the PC police, uh, well, the opposite mind control. Um, flash forward to last year, I was dressed up as Sinterklaas for a video shoot and I was at the uh, Amsterdam airport Schiphol and there was a black woman who came up to me and I wondered what she would have to say about Svarte Piet. She said, can I be your Svarte Piet? I thought, okay, this is clearly not as cut and dry as I want to think. Yes, as an American, let's own up to the fact that Americans are hypocrites. I think, look no further than and the Washington Redskins, yes, the nation's capital, has a blatant throwback. Washington to, State, dude. Yeah, uh, Washington State? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, DC. Yes. Uh, anyway, 
Moving on, we'll have that debate next. Yes. So, <laughs> quietly, uh, traditions have been changing. Uh, there is the uh, famous cookie called Necher Zunin. Zunin, which means kiss. Necher, which does not mean what you think. It means black person. But of course, the uh, makers, the cookie makers said, why are we deliberately alienating a whole se segment of society? So they changed Necher Zunin to just Zunin. And then <laughs> quietly, <laughs> as a throwback, they uh, have another one called, not Necher Zunin, but Necher Zunin. <laughs> just for those who still want to call it what they grew up calling it. Flash forward to 2011, uh, Quincy Gario, of course, uh, the artist who said uh, Svartopita's racism is his new artwork, and of course he was arrested and beaten by Dutch police in Dordrecht for uh, protesting at a Svartopita uh, Sinterklaas parade. And of course, 2013, last year when Vereen Shepard from the United Nations, who was apparently not really representing the United United Nations talked about the colonial imagery and the colonial hangover, if you will, of Svarte Piet, saying, why do the Dutch need Santa Claus at all when we already have Santa Claus? Basically asking a culture to give up their tradition by making them adopt your tradition, which, which is, in a word, colonial. Um, and then, of course, the reaction. There was a huge reaction to Vereen Shepard and the United Nations. Uh, Red Svarte Piet, or uh, Svarte Piet Moot Blyfin. This was a Facebook phenomenon that got Two million, I don't know, a huge amount of Facebook followers, uh, likes in a short amount of time. Uh, but yet, traditions continue to change. McDonald's uh, would have a normal Svarte Piet image here, but no Svarte Piet anymore. Fine, we'll just have the traditional cookies. Uh, Hema, uh, Intertoys, international retailers are starting to realize maybe Svarte Piet doesn't sell so well. Uh, CC uh, says, well, why not have Svarte Piet as an orange? And even Albert Hein said, sure, we'll have him an orange, but somehow we still need to keep a little bit of a reminder there. <laughs> so then we get to uh, progress again. Uh, this is this year on the Sinterklaas Journal. It looks like uh, Root, uh, Root Piet, or just Soot. Uh, maybe, uh, well, then they go too far. In Gouda this year, they have Cash Piet, uh, Measles Piet. There's also Hellraiser Piet. Or, <laughs> <laughs> is this is supposed to be a waffle, but to me, this is as scary as this guy. I'm talking about Krampus. <laughs> so this year, there were riots in Gouda, as the whole argument now has been radicalized. This year, a black woman was beaten in, uh, okay, and last year as well, uh, just for protesting, uh, or this woman was protesting as well against the United Nations, but was beaten apparently for assuming that she would be pros var to Pete. And then you get to stuff like these comments, which basically say, uh, next we'll have to, uh, yeah, close the zoos because you people will come across your ancestors. Yes, my ancestors put your people on the boats. Those were the days. Um, now you people have too much freedom, and uh, Svarte Piet is not racist. Uh, all you people are retarded. And of course, then you see graffiti like this, which says Turks go back to Morocco, which...